What is going on, guys? Today we are snorkeling for River Well, after kind of a, uh, a failed intro there, I just decided to go with it. What is going on, guys? Back with another craw video. Excited for this one because we have a special recipe. Nice little craw there. I was just picking them up uh, off the bottom or underneath rocks, tossing them in my little bag there. They weren't under every single rock we lifted up, but one out of every two, there were craws under there. There was a little tiny one that let him get away. I thought, man, there has to be a bigger one under here. I can see the tips of his claws, and he actually kept scooting farther and farther back there as I kept trying to lift up rocks, crafty little devil. And he's back in that hole there. And so I thought, you know, I'm just going to grab him. I don't care. He has claws. He can pinch me. I've got gloves on, right? So I grab him by the front, and he latches on. And let me tell you, it is amazing. For that tiny little creature, they have some major, major power. You would not think it. They don't look like it. But I was surprised by the power. And then this big one right here, I thought, you know, I'll just grab him by the front. And look at the size of those claws. And he grabs onto me. And that was the last time, actually, that I did that. Uh, I thought I'm grabbing him from the back from now. And I'm not going to let him pinch me. Went down to deeper water here. Usually the bigger ones are in deeper water. Not always, but a lot of times bigger ones are in deeper water. And they are under rocks. They're just chilling out. And actually, the first dive down into the deeper water, there's one just sitting right on top of the rocks. Oh. Grabbed him a real nice one there. And it's kind of funny because whenever I do this, I'm usually right in the middle of town. And so you get a lot of weird looks while you're in a wetsuit and snorkel mask walking around town. In fact, there's a hotel right by there. And uh, that's always funny. But down in the depths, there are the big ones. This big one right there. But look how crusty this one is. Looks like he just came out of the mud. That is a crusty crab right there. Arrgh. I was seeing him. He was pinching the camera and they wouldn't. Here's another one. I don't know what it is this year. It seems like a lot of them are uh, just a lot of them. They're just late in coming out from underneath the rocks. And so I had this idea for a while that I decide. I finally decided to implement it on this day. All right. So in addition to just the regular um, catching crawdads by hand, I have here some sturgeon bait. This is old sturgeon bait. It's over like a year old, and it doesn't smell right at all. So there's no way a sturgeon, I think, is gonna get this stuff. Because they have so much fresh stuff, they'd rather have fresh stuff. And so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna swim this down there, I'm gonna open the bottle just a little bit, so a lot of those juices and stuff get out, and this will help bring out crawdads. And we'll see how many crawdads like gather around this old sturgeon bait, old smelt. So I brought this old smelly smelt down on the bottom. You can see the milky stuff spilling out everywhere. I mean, smelt is already smelly, but this was really smelly smelt. And I thought, for sure, crawdads will be all upon this. So I left it down there, left a camera on a tripod, went back to just gathering, and thought I'll come back in about 15 minutes and uh, see what we got. So in the meantime, just kept lifting over rocks, and like I said, they were just burrowed still, so I had to dig a lot of them out. And I knew there was one back in here. There he is. Little tricky booger. Got him. And uh, yeah, just a lot of cool crawdads out. This one almost made his escape through the mud. Almost made his escape. I got him again. Just so many crawdads. It's so much fun being underwater. And it's really peaceful, like being underwater. When everything goes quiet, and all you can hear, you can hear like your own breathing. Oh, this is something interesting. So I, I flip a rock over, find a uh, top to a can, and can lid, and there was a crawdad hiding under the can lid. Look, look how crusty that one is. I actually thought he was dead because he wasn't moving. He was just barely moving, but it's almost like 
It was literally like he just came out of hibernation. So that was kind of strange. So cool story about this place where we were crawdaddy. Back when I was younger, I was snorkeling this spot with my brothers and my little brother caught a one in a million blue crawfish. Yes, we had a blue crawfish at this spot. So I'm just waiting for the day when I flip over a rock and I find a blue crawfish. The, the little bit of blue on that one reminded me. Here's a photo of a, of a um, one in a million blue crawfish. I have no idea why that happens, but they are very rare. And I had to think that we, if with all the time we spend down there, it'll eventually happen. I'll have that day where I flip over a rock and there'll be a beautiful blue crawfish laying right under the rock. I can't wait for that. That is gonna be such a cool video if that ever happens. I hope it does. And then this was cool. I'm swimming around, see something silvery, just a little glint of silver in the sun. Did not know what it was, but I was determined to dig it out down there in the sticks. And uh, it was all tangled up in a bunch of sticks. Pulled on it. Boom! It's a lure. It's a really big lure for this part of the river. Uh, somebody must have been fishing for the steelhead that fishing game release in here because there aren't really trout big enough to uh, attack that thing, at least in that part of the river. Back at the smelt, the smelly smelt, and uh, a little time lapse here. And you see that one little tiny fish coming up? Even the tiny fish he kind of swims, and he's not impressed. And he swims away. In fact, that other fish right there swam right by. Guys, I'm wondering if the smelt was so smelly that not even crawdads would touch it. The carp came over. The carp swam away. And then you even see right here, look in the corner. There's a crawdad. He sees it. He's thinking about it, but he walks away. Even he wasn't have any, having anything to do with it. And that is, that surprised me. That was one of the most surprising things about the day. I had no idea that crawdads demanded fresh meat. I did not know they were that picky. Uh, after like 45 minutes leaving it down there, there was not a single crawdad around it. So that was really, really surprising to me. Luckily, there were a lot out though um, under rocks and stuff. So I just flipped over and gathered my own. This one was just hanging out. I grab, this was a. This guy was ready for a fight right here, but I seized him too. We had a nice batch of them. Well, guys, that was a great time in the river. Man, that water is chilly. So anyway, we're all warm now. It's like 95 degrees out here, so we got warm pretty fast. So now we're gonna cook up everything, and I have an idea. We're gonna do something brand new, never done on the channel before. In a previous episode, I mentioned that is um, some good stuff. We they should sell crawdad nuggets at McDonald's. <laughs> um, then it occurred to me, like a few days later, wait, I should just make my own crawfish nuggets. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try to make deep fried crawfish nuggets today. And uh, yeah, this, this should be this should be fantastic, should be interesting. I got some new equipment for it. I have upgraded my crawdad uh, bowl here. So we got this thing. This, this all came in one container. This is GSI Bugaboo Backpacker. So first of all, you have the frying pan, boom, right on top. Then you have the lid to a pot complete with strainer so we can strain the crawdads. And then inside there we have sippy cups basically, but cups where you can put coffee or hot chocolate. And then you can sip out this side. And it's just a bigger, we have a couple forks in there, but it's just a bigger crawdad pot so I can boil more crawdads when I'm out. GSI brand new and then this little thing attaches on. Look at that. So we have just a little bit bigger crawdad pot. Just a little upgrade there. The first time I'm going to be trying this. Whoa! Add the lid. Water's boiling. So we have 25 Total crawdads there, guys. We're gonna let this little guy go. And then this one, he's, this one was soft. He just molted, and I wonder if the other ones kind of killed him. Look, his, his claw came off. I wonder if the other ones like pinched him to death or something. Anyway, we've got 25 of these bad boys to boil. Crawdads going in. Put the lid right on there, let those boil for just a few minutes. So while the craws are boiling, let's do a really fast giveaway. Guys, I have my, whoops, <laughs> trying to ruin my brand new catch and cook setup. Uh, anyway, I have my um, catch and cook all day 
t-shirts the black is my favorite but you guys can get them in any of the other colors sweet looking t-shirts if you guys are interested in a, a free Kedja Cook shirt, all you have to do, put a like on the video, then comment down below. It's that simple. Press the like button, comment down below, and guys, you're automatically entered. I literally pick somebody randomly from the comment section. I just close my eyes, I scroll up and down, all around, and I pick somebody randomly. I hate how giveaways like end. I usually pick somebody within the first week. So what we're gonna do is, once this video reaches 10,000 likes, which might be a little while, but once it, it may, may or may not, depends on if it takes off, but once this video reaches 10,000 likes, I'll do another giveaway. What I'll do is I'll take the person one, pin your comment to the top, and you'll dethrone the person who won in the first week. So if you're watching this video and it's old, make sure you still comment down below, or just comment anyway, because two months from now or three months from now, you still have a chance of winning something. So everybody comment down below and I'll pick somebody, I'll pick uh, two people randomly from the comment section. Heck, if it reaches 20,000 likes, I might pick a third person. So make sure you guys keep an eye on uh, you know, Ace Video's pin your comment thing. All right, so I think the crawls, a couple minutes is all we need. I'm going to, uh, ooh, this little ketchup cook set is nice. Strain the water out. Man, I love this thing. Dump them on the plate. Add some oil to the pot. Peel some half cooked crawls. My guess is we'll get about 30 nuggets out of this with 24 crawdads plus some of the big ones with their uh, claws. Big meaty claws. There we go, just like that. That's the start of a nugget. And then some of them, like this dude, these ain't just for attracting mates. For making these nuggets, guys, we have three bowls here. One bowl has milk and egg wash in it, as you can see right there. In the other bowl, we have some uh, just regular um, co uh, like chicken fry coating mix that is in this one right here. And then in the third, we have ch chicken fry from Louisiana Kitchen. This stuff is spicy. So we're basically gonna have spicy nuggets and regular nuggets. This is the kind of sad reality though of crawdads. Look, all that work, that much meat. Oh, well, at least we'll have two dozen nuggets. I'm gonna first put them in the milk wash here. You guys don't know this about me. I used to be the, uh, uh, well, well, some of you know this. I used to work at Chick-fil-A and my very first job there was to, uh, I was the breader. I breaded the chicken. Well, I was way back, in the, that was 2013. Working at the chick -a fill you Come a long it? way, bro. Yes, and started, then worked at Cracker Barrel and started my own business. And now here I am YouTube. A lot of different things. All right, we're gonna make about half of these in regular for Micah's sake. Woohoo! And then some of these spicy for me. Spot. Now we coat these bad boys around. And we'll coat these as well. Spicy. And you know, I'm just gonna, to save time, I'm just gonna throw them all in there all at once. All right, let's see if the oil's hot enough. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Little nuggets going in. Chick-fil-A would skin me alive if I uh, threw spicy in with breaded. That was a huge no-no. Oh man, you gotta shake nuggets so that they don't stick together. But since I can't shake them, I gotta stir them. Actually, no, at Chick-fil-A we would stir them. I forgot about that. Honestly, these shouldn't take long at all. All right, after just a minute or two, I think these guys should be just about ready. Oh, look at McDonald's even sponsored this video. They gave me this uh, free chicken tenders box and spices. We're gonna take these bad boys out of there. Let the oil drip just a little bit. Oops. Let the oil drip off the nuggets and throw them in our McDonald's box. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. McDonald's, this is patent pending. Box of craw nuggets. I'll sell the rights to you guys for two million. Look at that. I'm gonna serve this up right. We're gonna put this back in the bag. Fold it up. This reminds me of working at Chick-fil-A. Pardon me, sir. Did you order the craw nuggets? Oh, I did. Thank you. Dobie likes craw nuggets. All right, brother. Dude, 
We even have sweet and sour and McDonald's signature sauce. I like their signature sauce, Me yeah. Me too. I'm all about that action. Mmm. Cool. Dude. Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to try them just plain and then we'll dip there we the go. sauces. Dude, that is <laughs> That's really good. That is no lie. Only truth really good. Why? And they're crispy? I have to say, I'm not really a good cook, but I did make these right. They're not chewy or overcooked. You know what they're like? They remind me like a, uh, uh, what are they called? Little, little chicken poppers? What, what are they? Mm. Uh, popcorn chicken. Exactly. Popcorn crawdad. Popcorn crawdad. I'm going to dip one in the signature sauce, man. I'm going to go for the sweet and sour. Mmm. Guys, this is one of the best ways I've ever made crawdad. Wow. This is the best way. I, I'm, I can confidently say this is the best way I've ever made crawdad. Wow. That's, that is surprisingly, epically delicious. It was just kind of a, like, just a funny thing to do. But this wow. is actually really, really good. Dude, you hit a home run with these. Dude, I could sit like sit down at a ball game mm -hmm. with a box of these. You would need like a platter of them. By the yeah. way, the smoke in the video, oh, my Michael bad. is barbecuing crawdads. So check out his video. I'll put it up in the corner somewhere. Um, put his barbecue crawdad video. Really, really cool. Dude, I eat that at a restaurant. Oh, yeah. Look at the succulentness. Mm. I'm going to have one more. I would legit mm. eat that at a restaurant. You need like a big platter of them though. Yeah, yeah. I need a side of fries with this. Ooh, some hot, fresh cut, fresh fried Idaho potatoes. Dude, well played. Well, thank well you. played. I'm, I'm surprised. Mm. This is just going to be, I'm going to do this again. This was just going to be a one time thing, just for kicks. Because yeah. I try to make each video different. I might do this again. I mean, it's like it's like panning for gold, man. You got these little gold nuggets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like there's not a lot there, but you got to sift through it. You got to dig it out. You got to sift through it. You got to wash it. You got to sift it again. But then, what comes out? It's not very big, but it's worth a lot. Well worth the wait. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.